It's a big year for EA Games with lots of stuff coming out right now. So what's the strategy and focus behind EA Games at the moment? Well, this year obviously is, it's, a, it's a gigantic year for us. We have uh, seven games that we're, we're, we're uh, pushing this year. Uh, and, uh, and it's obviously a year that is where, the, where there's a lot of follow-up games to, to big games, which is important for us. Um, you have games like Need for Speed Most Wanted, Crisis 3, you have Dead Space 3, uh, we just announced uh, or showed you here um, the new Army of Two game being built in Montreal. Obviously the continuation of Battlefield and all the stuff that we're doing there. So there's a lot of stuff going on and I think for us is this is a year about getting the games out into the fans, make sure that they're as good as possible and then you know next year is, is, is hopefully going to be a little bit less but, but, but um, obviously as big. Is it, is it natural at this point in the generation that there are a lot of sequels, a lot of sort of established franchises that you're coming back with new new titles for? I think so. I, th I think it's it's natural. It's some, I mean, I think, and I think unfortunately the answer is quite boring. I think the answer is it's it's common business, right? It, it's expensive to make games. I think um, we obviously have a bunch of new IPs that we are working on. We want to make sure that the market is right and that the, we have the b biggest possible audience out there and frankly that we have the best possible technology out there when we launch them. Um, so I think it's quite natural. I think it's, it's something that Ubisoft also mentioned that the best time to, to launch something new is when people are open to that. There's a new generation and, and people are dying for something new. Yeah, I mean when there's a new generation of, of technology to come out, uh, the level field is kind of you know, back to, to zero again. So you have to start building up credibility on, on whatever platform you're on and then make games that, that fit that platform and that use that platform to, to the most, I think. Um, I'm, even though we don't have a lot of new IP coming, I'm very proud of the lineup we have this year because we have a lot of innovation. If you take a look, about, uh, if you take a look at Need for Speed as an example this year, it's probably the most innovative Need for Speed game in 15 years. You know, when, if you look at what Criterion have done, it is a completely open world They've broken a lot of conventions to what used to be a no what what used to be the norm in a racing game, like the typical start with a Toyota Yaris, work your way up, and eventually, after 25, 30 hours, you may get to a Porsche or something else. Alex and the team in uh, in England in in Guildford basically said, "Listen, we think that's a dumb idea. Why don't you let the player play with cars immediately, all the cars immediately?" And what they've done is they've created an open world where you drive around and if you see a car, you can go out and jump out and get into that car and you're driving it. And when you play it, you understand that that's a big thing for the game, right? And also the world that they've built is so connected and so friends focused. Like as an example is there are a bunch of speed cameras around the world and the, obviously the idea is to go as, you know, past one of those as quickly as possible and to find out how you are stacking up against your friends, you just drive up to one and boom, it appears in the world. You see the, the list of that particular speed camera. That's a consistent theme across the game. Same thing when you start a race, you just go up to a race start, you see the results of that, the list of the, the most wanted list for that, for, that, for that race. So I find that game to be highly innovative and as innovative as a new IP to some extent. So that's one approach, and, but when it comes to making a new IP, it's you know, it's it maybe to, to to your point earlier, maybe better to do that at a later stage for us. So you mentioned Crisis, and and that was sort of a part of EA Partners with with Crisis too. It seems like you're moving more towards EA Games is is taking a bigger uh, role, and, and EA Partners sort of move back. How's that sort of dynamic working right now? And not necessarily. EA Games, EAP has always been a part of the games label and EA and, and, and EA Games, and and uh, and frankly. Crytek is an independent developer that make make the game, you know, on their terms, and and they are deciding what to do with the game, what goes into the game. We are a partner with them. We are helping them when we can and in areas where they want help. And obviously, our job is to do to help them sell, you know, the game that they're building. Um, so I don't think 
it may look like there's a difference, but there actually isn't much of a difference. I would say that even though we're not in a new generation, there's been a tremendous shift these last few years from from sort of physical retail to the digital space. And I think EA has been spearheading that and you've already sort of made that transition already. How would you say that that sort of changed the way you work inside of EA games now that, that sort of that digital transition is in, in full, full, full force? Well, I'm glad that we've been early adopters onto it because if you, if you haven't been on that band, if you haven't jumped on that train years ago, you, it's going to look daunting to you to go in there now. To us today, it's just a natural course of business. Um, I've had this question before in, in interviews during this, this show, and the way I look at it is there are different business models. You have free-to-play, you have mobile games, tablet games, you have social games, you have packaged goods, games that you buy in a store, and you have digital distribution. There are so many different ways for a consumer today to find entertainment and to consume interactive entertainment. But arguably to us, it comes back to one thing, and that is, let's make sure that if we're going to be successful, we're going to have to make great content. And without great games, guess what? It doesn't matter what business model I have, no one is going to play my games. Um, but EA is very well equipped in being, uh, in addressing all these different business models. I think the work that we've done with Origin you know, it was highly criticized when it came out, by the way, just like Steam was, but now people are accepting it, accepting it, accepting it and it's becoming a lot, it's now a full-fledged, you know, well, well-functioning service that people don't have a problem with. They actually, on the opposite, they see the positives with it. Um, so, when you're early onto something, there's a risk that you will always be criticized for it, um, but then, as people get used to it and people understand the pure, the real value of it, you're actually seen as a pioneer, which is, kind of what's happening to EA right now. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm very happy for that. And I, and I guess it's also really important if you want to embrace digital to have your own platform because then you can really dictate sort of the conditions that you, you're not in the hands of anyone else. Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, we want to, we want to take control of our own destiny as a, as a big company. And, uh, and that's, that's ultimately what we did. And I think it's proving to be the right decision for us. So um, in terms of, of where do you see where do you see this moving in the future? Because we're we're you know we're seeing a lot of things now. There's there's an itching for the next generation. I feel in the whole industry, we're getting things like Wii, which is you know sort of like a, a hacker stream console, things like that. Where where do you see sort of digital? Is is it going to take away all of the retail things in in five years, or where do you see it moving at? Well, I think that that's a very personal. Uh, question and, and there is no no real answer to it uh, because no one knows at least that's my opinion I don't know for once I'm, I'm, a, I'm of the opinion again more my personal opinion than maybe an EA wide opinion but I'm, I'm of, the, of the opinion that I think this is going quicker than people think I think we're gonna see this within five years and uh, I think five to ten years and I think I think it's just a course of natural evolution I think the consumers are dictating where it's going and the consumers are clearly telling us that we're ready, we're doing this already, um, just give us the, the possibility and we will embrace it. Um, and, and I think for us as a company, we need to look at it exactly from that perspective. Don't be afraid of change, embrace change, and just understand that whatever we do as consumers is probably where the market's going. I understand nobody knows the exact timing of things, but next gen is sort of around the corner. How is EA preparing for next gen internally these days? Are you, are you already sort of building up for that? Listen, whenever the, whenever the day is that there are you know, new hardware in the market, you can probably bet that EA will be there. You know, that's, that's all I can say. Not much information there, but thank you very much thank for you. your time. Nice to meet you as always. Thank you.